You've seen my espresso machine tier list, now it's time to rank the espresso grinders. All espresso people know the grinder is more important than the espresso machine. Even if you have a top end level espresso machine, if you've got a crappy grinder, you're always going to get crappy espresso. So let's rank these espresso grinders according to my experience using them, but also hearsay and a hefty dose of random guesswork. And the disclaimer, don't take this video too seriously, I don't know everything there is to know about every coffee grinder. First one on the chopping block is my first espresso grinder, the Barazza Encore. It's a great little grinder and an entryway into the world of espresso for many, but after upgrading and seeing what I was missing, it became very clear to me that this grinder is not capable for espresso. The different settings at the finest level are just too far apart and the consistency is too uneven to get what I would call usable for a good espresso shot. But I like Barazza and for the price, I think they've made a decent grinder. So I'm gonna be kind and put this in the C tier. Next up was my upgrade from the Barazza Encore Core, which is the Well Home Pro or WPM grinder. I'd say that this was for sure a better grinder for espresso than the Encore, but for the price, there are just a lot of better options. In Japan where I live, this grinder is around $400 or $500, which is nowhere near on par with grinders in a similar price range. I liked it for sure, and I felt like I was getting a good experience until I upgraded again and realized that I'd been putting up with subpar espresso for a long time. So for that reason, I'm putting it in the C tier. The Kobe Concepts Diva. I really enjoyed playing around with a prototype of this machine last year, and I loved the steampunk design and fluffy grinds. It made me really excited for flatbar grinders, and now that it's in production, I would love to pick one up and compare it with the next grinder on this list. Hit the thumbs up button if you'd like to see a video like that. The Diva isn't for everyone, and you might not like the look or the fact that it runs on a battery, but I thought it was really great and it would look perfect next to my new Pro X. So for that reason, I'm putting the Kobe Diva in the A tier. The Turin DF64. I really love this grinder. For me, it's super satisfying to use, has great consistent grinds and reliable settings. I like the near zero retention with the bellow system and for the price, it is absolutely outstanding in the espresso range. I've been using mine for several months now and I really have no complaints. For me, this is an easy S tier. The Malconic EK43. It's probably the biggest grinder on this list, but I've definitely seen one for home use. Right? I got to use one of these in a friend's cafe here in Tokyo and it's a fantastic grinder. It's really fast and it has such perfect fluffy grinds, I can see why it costs so much. It also has this interesting dosing cup situation where you tap it on the side to release any grinds that have been caught up by static to get lower retention. It is a little noisy though, but it is a really great grinder for a pro home setup or for a small cafe. So I'm gonna put this one in the A tier. The Ranchilio Rocky Grinder. It's supposed to go along with the Ranchilio Silvia, which is the machine I used to have before I sold it. It's a great pairing and the Rocky punched above its weight for a long time, especially given the great price. However, the market for high-end espresso grinders has grown a lot in the last few years and the Rocky's starting to show its age. It's no longer one that I would recommend for new people starting out because there are just a lot of better options. So I'm putting this one in the B tier. The Breville Smart Grinder Pro. This is a bit of a weird one because it's very similar to the one that they've put in the Breville Brista Express. It has a little bit more range and can grind slightly finer, but it's still an entry-level espresso grinder. It just doesn't have anywhere near enough flexibility to dial in effectively. This ain't it, chief. D tier. Easy Presso JX Pro. Woo, what a hand grinder. Did I just say woo? I tried one out for a video a while ago and damn, that grinder has some range. There are tons of settings that are viable for espresso and I was really surprised how fine this hand grinder can get when compared with my electric grinder at the time, which was more than twice the price. Now there is the whole thing of having to grind by hand and it takes around 20 or 30 seconds to do this for an espresso. But if you don't mind that too much, then this is an outstanding coffee grinder to have for an entry level setup and you'll get disproportionately good espresso for the price you paid. A tier. The Niche Zero. I know you've been waiting for this one and I expect the comments are gonna be full of people telling me how overrated this grinder is, but I think it's a great little grinder and overperforms for the price. Yes, the hype train was too hype. And yes, Niche has struggled to scale up and meet demand and there are scalpers everywhere picking them up as soon as they're available and selling them back to you for a lot more. I am gonna count this against the company, but the grinder itself is excellent. My sister in the UK has one for her home setup and I would love one, if anything, just to compare it with the DF64, which I'm using every day. If it weren't for all the problems that Niche was having producing these things, then it would be in the S tier, but I'm demoting it to A tier because of Niche not dealing well with scalpers and stock issues even years after release. The Eureka Mignon Silencio. 
I think I use this grinder, but Eureka has so many similar looking grinders, it's really hard to tell. I can't tell the difference without looking into the minutia of what makes all of these grinders different with wildly different settings and prices. This is just too confusing, so while the Eureka Minion Silencio might get a B from me for having decent fluffy grinds and quiet operation, although a little bit lower build quality, I'm giving Eureka a D for confusing their customers with multiple identical looking grinders with different names. Stop it! The Cheado E37Z Hero. <gasps> Sorry, no, 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 too expensive. I'm sure it's great, but I just can't see that amount of money being justified under any circumstances. C tier. The Baratza Sete 270. It looks cool as hell with that L-shaped base and the inverted grinder chamber, and it has very low retention and grinds pretty dang fast. It's not going to blow your mind or put you in godshot territory, but it is a really decent mid-range grinder for the price, so I'm putting this one in the B tier. The Victorio Arduino Mythos 1. Oof, this is an amazing grinder if you have the money. I first saw this one in a cafe here in Tokyo and thought, wow, that is a really quiet grinder. I mean, it's pricey, but I haven't seen that many higher tier espresso grinders actually earn their price tag. This one is S tier for me. The Mazza Super Jolly. This machine is in half the cafes in Tokyo and it's not hard to see why. It's a really great grinder and it's easily customizable with a dosa, which I don't recommend, but for some reason the cafe I was consulting did that anyway. It's better in a cafe setting, I would say. If you're at home, I would recommend saving a little bit of that money and putting it towards a grinder that's more suited for a home setting. But yeah, all around a great grinder. This is going in the A tier. The Weber Key. I haven't used this grinder because I don't have $2,000 to use on an espresso grinder for home use like this. It's really only for the most extreme coffee people who have very deep pockets. But it was very interesting watching other content creators trying to explain the difference between this machine and the one they've been using before. Can you really taste the difference between this and the grinds that you're getting from something like the Niche when it's four times the price? Is it really four times better? I don't know enough about this grinder, but I'm not ready to put that kind of money down to find out. So I'm gonna hedge and put this in the B tier. I hope you liked this video and recognize that this is a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Don't take this list as gospel, but hopefully I'll be able to own and play with more of these grinders in the future to make reviews for you wonderfully over-caffeinated people. Honestly, to me, it seems like there's massive diminishing returns for anything you pay over around $1,000, and what you're getting after that is speed, brand, or convenience. But who cares what I think? What do you think? Did I miss your grinder? Am I wrong about the niche and is it overrated? If you haven't seen my espresso machine tier list, then you can click right here to watch that one now. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next one.